In this tutorial, we will learn about models inside Xenco Game Studio. Models, they are the 3D meshes that make up our scene. So this could be a house, a character, a weapon, a tree, a mountain, and the list goes pretty much on and on. In this tutorial, we will learn about the different scenarios you can have when importing your raw resource models directly into Game Studio, how we can apply materials to them, and how this can be done automatically. What this tutorial doesn't teach is how to use models with animation. Since this is such a broad topic, we will have an extensive tutorial on this in a later tutorial. Let's get started. As you can see, I have Xenco Game Studio opened and I have a very empty scene right in front of me. To the left, I have five different folders inside the resource folder inside my project, and these contain various scenarios of importing a model. In the first scenario, we're going to import a model without any textures. In the second model, we'll import a model with a texture, which is going to be automatically applied. Then in the third model, I'm going to demonstrate what happens if a model refers to a texture, but it doesn't have any of those textures located inside your folder. And then in the fourth scenario, we're going to import a model that has textures, but the model itself isn't referencing them. So we have to manually apply those textures to our model. And in the fifth scenario, we're going to look at a model that doesn't use any textures and makes use of a material file, which has some static colors defined for the various meshes of the model. So let's start with the first model. We're going to use the add acid button here inside the acid view. We're going to go and click on model. And then we have various options here. So at first we have the procedurally generated models. Those are like a capsule, a plane. Uh, the box is very useful, especially as a placeholder or if you just want to have a very basic shape. But in our case, we're going to select the 3D model option. This opens up a folder and we're going to select the first model that we have in our first scenario, which is box1.fbx. After selecting that, we have the import from model dialog. This has two options, materials and textures and skeleton. Skeleton is something that we use for animations, among other things, and that is something that we will cover in a later tutorial. For now, we are only interested in the import materials and import texture options. Now, since we are only importing a model of a box, uh, we can deselect these two options. The model has been imported and we can drag it into our scene to create an entity for us. With it still selected, we can then go to the property grid and here we can see that this entity has a new component called the model component. And all this model component does is that it references a model inside the asset view. We can change this to something else if we want to, but in our case, we're just going to leave it at that. We then have an option render group. Now, this is useful uh, if you have multiple cameras in your scene and you want certain cameras to render a group of models and another camera render a completely different group of models. Uh, we're not going to cover this option in this tutorial. The cast shadows option is a very uh, obvious one. If we deselect this one, notice how our model in our scene doesn't cast a shadow. We then have the materials tab. And since we don't have any textures or materials in this case as well, there's nothing interesting going on here. Let's move on to a model that does have textures. And in this case, we're going to uh, drag and drop the models and textures directly into our asset view. So this is a model of a barrel and it has a texture reference as well. And that texture is in the same folder as the model. So I'm just going to drag them in. Zenko Game Studio detects that uh, there is a model and a texture. So we're just going to go for that model option. We get the import from model dialog again, and this time we do want to check these two options because we want to import the materials for this model and we also want to import the textures for it. And what that does, we press OK, and you'll notice that we have now three new well, assets inside our asset view. We have the texture itself, we then have the material, and we have the model. 
If we would select this model right now, notice that inside the materials tab, we have a reference to this material and the material on its own turn has a reference to the texture. We can also see this if we go to the bottom right of our screen and with our material still selected, we go to the reference tab here. Notice how it says referenced by, which is in this case our uh, model, and it references a texture. This way you can always easily find what an asset is referencing and what it is referenced by. Let's just drag this object to the scene so that we have a lovely little extra object in our beautiful scenery right here and then move on to the third scenario, which is importing a model that actually has uh, a texture referenced, but that texture is not at the right location. So we have that same barrel that we've already imported, but I moved the texture to a different folder, a subfolder in this case. And although it's there, it's not in the right location. Let's just select these two files, or file and folder, drag them in, Select the 3D model option again. Again, we go for importing materials and textures. And if we press OK now, we get a warning. And this warning states that it has detected a texture, but it's not available on the disk at this given address. It's not in the model that it should be. And that is why we have this, uh, we have these three assets in our asset view that have this red exclamation mark. It just doesn't know what to do with them. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and delete those since we can't use them. Let's go to the fourth option. So in this folder, I have the exact same box from earlier, but this time I also have two textures. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to use these, uh, this texture only. Now, although this texture is made specifically for this box, the box model itself, uh, when opened in a 3D program, doesn't actually reference any textures. So if I would select these two, drag them in, and if I would click on 3D model, and I'd say, hey, I want to have a material and a texture, and I press OK, notice how I get an odd texture file and an odd material file because this box, it's not actually referencing any textures, but we did say that we want to import any. So it's gonna create this sort of temporary placeholder texture and material for us. Well, we don't want those. And now we're gonna apply our texture manually. So what we can do is just select that texture, drop it back into the asset view. This time we say, hey, this is a texture asset once that is done importing, we can create a material for it, a basic diffuse material, and then just simply drag this texture on top of the diffuse map slot. Finally, now we select the box again, and then we drag this material onto the materials slot for this model. And you can see already in the preview that the model has been updated with the right texture. Let's just place it in the scene because that just looks so much better. Okay, now the fifth and final scenario is when you have a model and that doesn't reference any textures at all. It instead refers to a material file. And if I would open this file in an external program, like for instance, 3D Viewer, which comes with Windows 10 by default, and I can see that we have this really basic model, this low poly model of an axe, and if I go to its details, I can see that it has two different material IDs, but it doesn't have any texture or UV coordinates for this model. So this means that it relies on either a material file or on vertex colors. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm not going to select both files. I'm only going to select the OBG file, drag it in, say that this is a 3D model, and instead of choosing both options, I'm going to disable import textures because I only want to import the materials for it. And as you can see now, we have this X and two material files have been created for me, which are basically just a diffuse color for each. And if we drag this model into our scene and the materials are being rendered for this axe. 